four taxis later, you get dropped off at the main road, and you walk about four and a half kilometers to get to his offices. Got there, and I went to reception, met a young lady. She was young then. She's much older now. And I greeted as you do. I said, Sao Bonama. And she greeted back, and I said, I'm here to meet Utata. She opened the book. She went right to the end of the book, and she found my name on the visitor's book. She said, Wen Vos? And I said, Yeah. She said, Take a seat. So I went and I sat. We all have those spaces. You've been to them, those offices where there's so many people who've sat at reception. As you sit, your bum sinks into the abyss and your knees rise above your eyes and you can barely see what's in front of you. So there I am. I'm sitting. I'm waiting for Utata. Out comes Zelda, big staunch Afrikaner lady. And she walks towards me. She says, hi. Are you Mr. Vuzi Tatum? Vuzi Tatum. Tatum. It's funny, but it's actually not. Whatever race you are, if you've lived in this country your whole life, you have zero excuse not to know how to say black names. I said earlier, the basis of humanity is my name. It's not Vuji, it's Vu Si. Two syllables, very simple, stitched together. When we get to Kakambile, you can attend advanced classes. <laughs> Vusi, easy to do. So she comes to meet me. She says, Mr. Medibo will meet you. She takes me to his study. If you've never been, today it's a museum. I invite you to go and visit it. You walk into his study. The door was hinged, locked. And so the only way to open it was to push both sides of the door in. So you push both doors in. It opens. And there in front of you, from the beginning to the end is a long Persian carpet, a tiny little table, three seats on it, wooden cupboards from the floor to the ceiling, books on the cupboards that looked like a lawyer's chamber. But as you stood, if you took a moment, right across the, the Pran French window, if you stilted, you'd see just there, just there, a koi pond with the water running. So Zelda says to me, Mr. Titim, can I get you something to drink? My mother. She's in the audience. My mom said, Danam, you have to go to the house. You have to go to the house. You have to go to the house. You have to go If you don't know why, I asked my mom. I said, why? She said, because you see, tea is high tea. Coffee is common. <laughs> so there I am and Zelda says to me, can I get you something to drink? I said, yes, can I have some tea? Then she said those words. All of us have heard them. Black people, you've all heard those words. The minute you hear them, your mind goes, what are we talking about now? She said, will that be Jasmine or Earl Grey? And I said it exactly like this. I said, who's Jasmine? And the next thing I said was, you don't have Joko. No Trinconyana. So Zelda goes away. She goes away. She goes to make the tea. She comes back. She brings me the tea with eat some more biscuits. Important to mention the eat some more biscuits because I didn't ask for them. I always thought there was a bit of racial profiling. <laughs> you know, eat some more with aromet is shortbread at Woolworths, right? It's the same thing. It's just half the size, 10 times the price. So she brings me the tea, and I'm sitting, and you start drinking the tea. I'm very nervous, so as you pick up the tea to drink it, my hand shakes. It spills a little bit on the sauce. That's not really a problem. I put it, and it, it spills on the sauce, so I put it down. The problem is the next time I pick it up, it spills again, and the tea starts to splatter on my shirt. So I decide that the only way to do this properly is if I drink the tea without lifting it from the cup, which means I must tilt it and lean in. All of you have done this during Christmas, when there's Ultramel in the fridge. It's the only time we have Ultramel in the fridge. Christmas is when you open the door of the fridge and you lean in. And you steal one sip of Ultramel. <laughs> Tell you, one of the things I love about us as a race group is I think black people are the only people who have a hierarchy for dairy. <laughs> You know, like, I can, you, like when they do LSM, like, you can just tell with Terry where, where you are. You know, right at the bottom, Stalin and Gomas. 
And in fact, below Inkomazi, so it's like Inkomazi, and below Inkomazi is Inkomazi that's expired. <laughs> if you've never been poor, you've never had expired Inkomazi. <laughs> so it's Inkomazi, then just above it, Inkomazi, a bit richer, Amasi. And then uh, just above that is skim milk. Uh, if you don't know what skim milk is, when you have full cream and then it's half finished, Mama could tell a man's. I toilet the food. Skim milk. It's skim milk, fat free, full cream, cream, and then right at the top, Ultraman. <laughs> like if you have Ultramel, you've made it. So I'm waiting for Utata to come and I'm drinking my tea. Most people don't know this, but uh, Nelson Mandela was a giant. And I don't mean it in the figurative sense. I mean it quite literally. He was quite literally a giant. I'm not small. I think you saw me earlier. <laughs> you see what I did there? You saw what I did there. You saw what I... By the way, whoever keeps tweeting, don't skip leg day, you probably don't have a gym membership. <laughs> I'm fascinated by people that, don't, that say don't skip leg day and have never been to the gym. You skip every day. <laughs> Somebody just said, <clears throat> yeah, I'm talking about you. Uh, <laughs> so there I am, and I'm sitting waiting for Utata. Now, I'm not a small guy. I'm 6'2". I weigh 101 kilos. I bench press 160. I weigh size 11. I can hold my own in a scrum if I need to. Utata was 6'5 when I met him. It said he was 6'6 when he was younger. Six, five. I'm here. He was there. I wear size 11 shoes. He wore size 13. The man, physically, was a tank. You know, most people walk with the heel of their foot first. That's why your heels have got fat and skin on them. It's so that as you walk, the fat and skin on your heel breaks the weight as your foot hits the ground. That's why your heel feels soft and tender. Utata used to walk with the ball of his foot first, so that meant when he was coming, you heard him coming. Now I want you to picture it, right? So I'm this little kid, I'm sitting and I'm waiting for Utata, I keep leaning in to drink, and then I hear, where is he? <laughs> go, he's coming, he's coming, like Utata, he's coming, he's coming. I put the cup down, and then he says, okay, is he in the study? Yeah, Mr. He's waiting for you in the study. Okay. Go, go, go. He gets to the study. He pushes the doors open. He walks in. He says, my son, come here. Mm. My father had died some years before then. And nobody had called me my son since then. So Tata says this. And as you might imagine, my stomach starts to tingle. You've had this feeling before. And then my chest gets tight. My throat clogs up. I can't swallow. My mouth gets dry. I can't feel any spit. My forehead heats up. And I know what's happening. I know this biological process. The next thing is sugar water is going to come out of my eyes, <laughs> down my cheek. It's called crying. And just before the moment, the only thing I could think, with tears teetering on the brink, of my eye. The only thing on my mind was, Vusi, do not, as a Zulu man, let a Kosa man see you cry. <laughs> so I'm this close to crying, and the only thing I could do was I leaped up, leaped up, opened my arms, and I gave him a big hug. My face landed right on his sternum, and I was stilted. At my height, on my toes, my face was here. He sits me down. He says, I have been looking forward to this for uh, some time now. They told me you're a world champion speaker. I said, yeah, but that. He says, let's talk. <laughs> I decided on the taxi drive there, that the, the taxi ride there, that the only way to really have an intelligent conversation with a global statesman who spent 67 years of his life fighting for yours and my freedom was if I said nothing but I asked really intelligent questions. 
I formulated those questions. This is the beauty of waiting for four, Masthalsane, is the taxi must fill up. You have time. You can think. So whilst I was waiting for four, for Masthalsane, to fill up, in my mind, I was formulating those questions. I asked him, I said, Tata, is there anything you regret? He says, one. He says, one. His son died whilst he was in prison, his oldest son, and by their belief in their culture, when the oldest son dies, the father must bury him. The father, not alive, the father's equivalent. His brothers must bury the son. If they don't do so, the son will not see the hereafter. When his son died, Utata went and asked the apartheid government for reprieve to go and bury his son, and the government of the day said to him, if you renounce what you have said about apartheid, we will let you go and bury your son. He wouldn't renounce his beliefs. He didn't get to bury his son. In his mind, his son never made it to the hereafter. This is why I'm fascinated by people who have the audacity, the unmitigating temerity to call Utata a sellout. Just think the next time you make that statement. He gave us the opportunity. What we do with it is up to me and you. All his generation did was give us the opportunity. There are some who call him a sellout on social media. Their own families were keeping the system of apartheid running, working in the factories during the stairway days. Sometimes before you cast aspersion, you should perhaps take a look in the mirror. You might not like what you see. We get towards the end of the meeting. There's a knock on the door. Zelda peeks her head. This is... Personal assistant signed for, it's time to wrap up. So Zelda peeks her head. He looks at me and he says, I, uh, I must go. Then he says, but you know, they told me uh, you are a speaker. I said, yeah, what that? He says, but man, you have not spoken. <laughs> Have you any final questions? This was the one. I thought about it on the taxi drive. I th I've been thinking about it the two weeks before when we got the letter to come meet him. This was the question I decided. I asked him this one. This is it. This is the deal closer. After I ask him this question, he's going to remember me at the very least for the rest of the week. <laughs> Here was the question. I asked him, I said, Dad, what is your dream for South Africa? And he said, South Africans need a little bit of faith. I asked him, what is faith? He said, not me. Faith is uh, the ability to see the invisible, believe in the impossible, and trust in the unknown. Yours and my challenge as we unlock the systems of slavery that permeate in our minds is to live by a little bit of faith. Thank you. Nice. 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 You guys killed it. <laughs> well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that's not, that's not. <laughs> <laughs>